Hello. In this discussion, we are going to learn about slip test. So basically, what is slip test? First of all, we will get to know what is slip. Slip. Suppose a person who is moving with his normal speed suddenly gets slip. Means whatever speed he was moving, that speed is slip. Means he he slipped because of uh, change in that normal speed. Same thing happen in our machine. If suppose a machine who is designed to run at or we require to run at some synchronous speed, it is slipped and it started running at different speed. Then this difference is nothing but slip. So this test is uh, slip test. The name came because we are using that slip to find some of the parameters. First of all, we will learn. We, we we should know that slip test is done uh, only for salient pole and in synchronous machine. Why salient pole? I will discuss. And synchronous machine already I have discussed in my last videos. So salient pole rotor. What type of rotor it is? It is basically salient pole means it is salient pole rotor. The design of the rotor is salient. Saliency is uh, nothing but uh, like our fan. It is a non-salient means saliency is there. It is non-uniform. So this this type of rotor we are going to do slip test. The rotor construction you have seen in many books and all. This is slip cylindrical rotor construction. This is also two types: wound type or slip ring type. I am not going in detail of about it. Uh, and also in this also they are uh, inside construction. Suppose this is one uh, radial construction I am desired designed. Uh, another parallel construction is also there for cylindrical machines. Okay, so this is cylindrical, and this is what I am talking about: a salient pole rotor. This is salient pole rotor. It is not cylindrical, but saliency is there, like in our fan. Okay, and uh, this is uh, nothing but in this type of rotor because it is used in synchronous machine. And I to I have told you in last videos that to run start the synchronous machine. we have two option to use damper winding uh, which start it's as induction machine so these are nothing but the damper windings and these are main field winding in this type of rotor okay this is field winding this is damper winding this is just to start as a induction uh, no need to get confused just see this is one salient pole type of rotor which has this field winding okay and where it is used actually this type of cylindrical rotor it is having higher speed because less number of poles also we can design in this and this type of rotor is used in thermal power plant this type of rotor be especially designed for hydro power plants where low speed is there as we know hydro power plant we cannot get much higher speed so for low speed hydro power plant this type of rotor is specially used and it can be designed with high, higher number of poles now see if suppose this type of rotor i am putting inside an is stator this is three phase supply this is one of my stator and inside this i am putting this type of rotor okay now see if i am putting this type of rotor we can see or we can say that this type of rotor is nothing but we can say uh, it is combination of two rotors one is inside one which is smaller other one is outsider one okay so outsider one this type of outsider one will have less air gap from the stator and uh, this side one will be having more air gap okay so when we are putting this type of rotor in a stator this side air gap is less air gap is less means reluctance is less and reluctance is less means this side we will get higher reluctance suppose in this rotor i am calling these axes as direct axis this is direct this is direct this is direct this is direct and in between them this is quadrature axis so this d axis where air gap is come reluctance is come reluctance will be higher and corresponding to this this it will take lesser current okay so hd will be high and id will be less and this side means this side where a small rotor is there A small rotor means this air gap is more from a stator, air gap is more, 
and air gap is more so the reluctance is more the reluctance is more means we will add have less reactance less reactance then we can say current will be higher i am not talking about voltage i will talk it later so this type of rotor if i am putting in a stator there will be two things we can assume it with having one small rotor and one outer big rotor so definitely both will have different different reactance as we mentioned xd and xq now how do we will find this xd and xq because whenever we are doing some test on any synchronous machine we need to find these parameters to calculate efficiency and other voltage regulation and many other things so how do we will do this test this is one of the uh, testing arrangement for the slip test of synchronous machine of salient pole so first of all suppose this type of rotor i have put in the stator and stator is connected to three phase supply and one more thing the three phase connection is very simple always only you need to here only you need to measure voltage and current how do we measure voltage remember never connect this voltage in series why suppose if i am connecting one voltmeter and i am taking one connection here one connection here these are at same voltage then my voltmeter automatically get short circuited so voltmeter can never be connected in series it will always be connected in parallel or in line a meter is always connected in series because if we will connected in 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 a parallel means for the same voltage drop it will be get burned so a meter should be always in series and then this simple connection we will do we can do in lab and uh, with this connection we will give three phase supply to the stator now what this three phase supply will do it will create a rotating flux as i have discussed in the ac motors concept it will dis it will give rotating flux suppose the speed of the rotating flux is 1000 rpm clear this side i am not giving supply as of now what i will do first of all i will connect this rotor to another prime mover okay this is another machine suppose converter fed induction machine i am putting where where i can vary the speed so one prime mover is connected which is coupled to this rotor now what i am going to do through this prime mover means through this rotor speed i am going to run this rotor suppose if i am running this rotor at a speed of 1000 rpm then this rotor will also will be running as running at 1000 rpm and this flux is also running at 1000 rpm i have given some voltage only 20 to 25 volts i will tell why i am giving less voltage i have given this voltage so this flux will also rotate at 1000 rpm okay and this uh, rotor is rotating through prime mover at a speed of 1000 rpm means what this flux and this rotor will not have any relative motion so because of this flux in this rotor any current will be induced or any voltage will be there no now suppose if i am changing the speed of this rotor slightly different from its synchronous means i am inserting slip suppose this rotor i am running at 980 rpm 980 rpm means this is 1000 rpm flux this rotor is 980 means 20 rpm it is slightly lesser than then it is sufficient for this flux to induce a current in this so what will happen this flux will induce voltage in this rotor Yeah. Uh, so what I have did, what I did, I just left this uh, rotor field winding open, and I am giving twenty five percent. Suppose if I am giving hundred percent voltage, then the induced current or induced voltage in this rotor will be very high, and so it and it may also burn the windings of this rotor because it is already running through this prime mover, and I am trying to run from this side also. so uh, whenever we are running this uh, rotor less than this 1000 rpm or slip is not always lesser it may be higher if i am running this rotor at 1000 10 rpm that time also the, the, there will be relative motion and this flux will be able to induce the voltage in this rotor now as i already told you this rotor we can assume one small rotor and one outer big rotor then what will happen whenever this part of this side d axis side will be align will be coming in front of this rotating flux axis it will see this reluctance is less means uh, 
reactance more then it will take less current corresponding to this side so it will take less current suppose it is taking i1 it is taking v1 so for this side now suppose this side of which is higher reluctance side is coming in front of this rotating flux then it will take obviously more current so suppose it is taking more current another current and another voltage and now this is running at a uh, slip speed this flux is running at synchronous speed this supply it what it will do will it supply one current or one voltage no it will supply both current and both vo voltage at the same time so what will happen if we are connecting one voltmeter and ammeter we will see that the knob of this ammeter will oscillate this oscillation is because sometimes this is coming in front of this axis sometimes this side is coming in front of a stator field axis so it will take i min i max or v min v max so from this as we know for the d axis current is less and for the q axis current is more and one more thing as it is taking less current for the d axis the voltage drop across the stator winding will be less and voltage drop is less for q axis reactance is come current is more voltage drop will be higher so to maintain the same supply or it grid will try to maintain the same uh, connection same flow of current in both side it will give voltage higher in case of whenever d axis is coming front of or whenever q axis is coming it will give low voltage because this time voltage drop is more so this voltage will also get oscillate this current is get, getting oscillate another meter will be voltmeter that will also get oscillate so from that oscillation we can find v max v min i max i min and we can get what x d and f q clear now see these thing we are getting when the rotor is running at a speed of slip speed so these values will be unsaturated we whenever we are using this machine in any plant this type of rotor will let's run at will run at synchronous speed so that time reactance will be different so how do we find this uh, unsaturated reactance to a exact one so to find the exact one we'll do a plot between various values of x dx x cube at different speed and finally through that plot we will this is slip one or different different slip at the slip zero means at a synchronous speed we can extra plot this plot and we will get the exact value of x d and x q so this is all about slip test of a salient pole synchronous machine thank you very much